All right, what's going on, everybody? I think we got better visuals tonight. You're obviously here for the Midwest Swing podcast and Periscope simulcast. Thanks for checking us out. Got the angels and mirrors on the TV right now. Just tweeted out statistics for Alex Meyer, who is former Twins right-hander who started for the Angels tonight. Four innings, eight hits, six earned runs, four strikeouts, three walks. So Michael Nelson from the Star Tribune tweeted me, the Denny Green, they are who we thought they were, GIF. Yes. Alex Meyer looked exactly like he has pretty much every chance he's gotten in the big leagues. And so it's pretty much who he is and what he does. I'm your host, Brandon Warren. You obviously probably know that if you have seen me on Twitter and are checking this out. But if you haven't followed me on Twitter, follow me at Brandon underscore Warren. Follow, um, follow me on, on Twitter there. Follow at Midwest Swing Pod. Follow at Zone Coverage MN. That's all the things I'm up to right now with Twins coverage. Wrote a really uh, sizable blog from today's Twins game. 8-5 loss to the A's. Two out of three, though, which isn't bad, obviously, as Meatloaf used to say. If you want to communicate with me, you can do so on the screen. I can't promise that I'm going to see it. In a way, and Danny Valencia just hit a home run, speaking of former Twins. If you also want to communicate with me during the show, it's better to tweet me at Brandon underscore Warren. Those things stay up. I've got Periscope, stage, I don't know if that's right or left for you guys on the screen, it's stage left for me. So either tweet me, Periscope me, whatever, uh, and, and we'll get you on the show, and we'll have some fun with it. I think the I think the graphics look a ton better tonight, which is good. We're going to try to keep it to 20 minutes, because last night we recorded about 22 minutes didn't save to my phone, and then I had to re-watch it and re-record it. Whole big rigmarole. So, anyway, um, yeah, obviously sat through a uh, Kyle Gibson start today. So we'll chat about that. We'll chat about the upcoming Red Sox series if you want to talk about that. We can talk about pretty much whatever you want. Um, so let's just get after it. Sorry, I had to take a little sip there. Um... The one thing I did want to get to, actually, I did have a message from, let's see if I can find it here, um, Dale Ruck said, congrats on the upcoming baby, uh, <laughs> it is as much fun as scary as you're thinking, he uh, suggested writing a journal once the baby's born, which is pretty cool, all that fun stuff, his question, let's see, why can't I find it, he had a question, oh yeah, Twins Radio was talking last night about the difference in... Statcast and the Twins measurement. They said the press box was split. Which side do you fall on? So, on Tuesday night when the Twins were hitting six home runs, the Statcast data comes out. You know, a few minutes after each play happens or after each home run happens, Dustin Morse, the Twins PR guy, has a chart. So basically, he locates where in Target Field a home run lands, and he can tell you an estimated distance of how far that home run went. What? happens is you've got to get a lot of discrepancies between the stat cast data. And I think angle has to be taken into consideration because think about two baseballs um, that hit at different trajectories. You know, one, one may be coming down and landing in the first row. One might be still ascending and landing in the first row. You do have to project based on angle how much further it would go, I feel like. So I, I do fall on the stat cast side of things, even though I'm aware of the issues with StatCast data right now. I know that it's coming under fire quite a bit as far as some of the inaccuracies and those sorts of things. So uh, it was funny, though, because Rhett tweeted that he doesn't know why teams still estimate when they have StatCast data, and so Dustin was giving him some crap in the in the press box. Uh, I did see somebody ask if that was Dustin's job. Actually, Dustin's kind of a jack-of-all-trades. He does um, media stuff, sets us up with all the things, basically coordinates clubhouse stuff before and after game sends out press releases and then collects information and all kinds of stuff during the game he does literally everything i would be um i would be stunned if he doesn't work like 20 hours per day ted wants to know what is Statcast under fire for i believe it's like the uh, there's like some some statistical inconsistencies and i'm trying to remember what exactly they were um there's, there's just, I mean, maybe somebody can help me out if they're in the chat and have seen this. It's, um, there, there's been some data that's, it's, 
not exactly as uh, detailed as they think it is right now. Um, I don't know if it's exit velocity or if it's uh, I'm not sure, I'm not exactly sure what it is. I just I just know that they've come under fire on uh, okay pitch identification that might be it um, and velocity as I know have been a little bit off and they've recalibrated that. Um, Ted, I'll try find it and send it your way because I, I know there's just been some inconsistencies about the data that's coming out and how reliable it is. And I feel like it's launch angles, exit velocities, and those kind of things. So um, I don't know. Uh, I still think it's it's a great amount of data that we can use and will eventually round into something much more useful than uh, than what we had. Um, Ted says it's all camera generated from within the park. Yeah, I mean, as far as I know, I believe that that's that's how it's all done, and so the calibration has to be right on all that fun stuff. I think it's I think it's good data for where it is in the process, and I think it's going to be a work in process for a little while to really be certain that everything that comes out is actually useful. Um, I've just seen a lot of people on baseball Twitter uh, a little bit jaded about the data coming out and how it's. You know, it needs more context, needs more care, needs more, um, you know, uh, people understanding it when they use it, which which I understand. Um, you obviously want people to be intelligent when they're using these kind of things. Um, uh, Schmick <laughs> said, would you rather have Alex Meyer or Kyle Gibson? And obviously, Kyle Gibson, tough day today, sent back out. Uh, Grant, tweet that to me so I can read it because I don't have time to read it. Um, yeah, so, sorry, back to the, the question from Schmick, which is a weird name to say. Uh, would you rather have Alex Meyer or Kyle Gibson? <laughs> I, I'm thinking Kyle Gibson, to be honest with you. I just think that he's way more reliable moving forward. With that said, he's a mess right now, but so too is Meyer. So, I think Gibson will get things turned around. He'll be fine. Like, he won't be great or even particularly good. May not be part of the future here, but I think there's a lot left for him to show uh, skill-wise, and I think that going to AAA will be good for him. It is kind of stunning, though. It's been almost four years since he's pitched that. I think it was August 30th, 2013, uh, rehab stint notwithstanding, because he did have a rehab stint last year when he was battling, I think, the back stuff early in the season. So Gibson, though, today, when he got sent down, obviously he looked a little shell-shocked. Uh, was he shell-shocked because of how he pitched? Was he shell-shocked? From being sent down, a little unclear. I think he, I think he was aware that it was possible, and he certainly should have been aware that it was possible based on the six start stretch that he had. He said all the right things. He's going to go down and get to work right away, and uh, you know he's he's not surprised they sent him down. He understands. He's he's shocked that it came to this, but that uh, you know, never in the back of his mind, or he never really hoped, or never really thought it would come to this but totally said that he understands where the team's coming from. So um, totally owned everything. Typical, you know, obviously uh, accountable guy, which is good. And, um, he, you know, you wish the best for him because he's a good guy in the clubhouse too. But uh, at some point you got to, you know, put some results out there. And it was pretty obvious he was out of sorts. Yeah, Ryan Sawyer in the chat here saying Gibson was good in spring too. I saw a tweet. I want to say it was like Diana Graham on Twitter like a 1.980 ERA in the spring, and now he's like 8.20 in the regular season, which tells you, as we've been saying all along, just how much spring training data matters. Um, so let's dive into this game here. Um, we'll get some thoughts as far as what people think about today's game. Primo Baby wants to know how bad the Buxton injury looked. Um, hard to say. Because there was the, um, I mean, I think there was three plays in the outfield. One of them, he hit like the trap door bullpen thing and it broke through, which is not supposed to happen. Uh, Molitor said that he thought the second collision was the one that might have initiated the injury. They got him back into the dugout. He seemed okay. And then the final play, the catch off the ball from, I think it was Joyce hit it. Uh, to end the inning in the fifth, I want to say, um, was the one that kind of sealed the deal as far as, yeah, we got to get him through the protocol. 
make sure that he's okay. So he passed the initial protocol. He'll take it again tomorrow. I, I'm kind of wondering too, you know, it didn't look, I wouldn't say it looked good because each of those plays looked iffy as far as, uh, you don't never want to see a guy running that fast hit the wall. But it didn't look super serious. Again, certain injuries don't always look serious and can show up as serious later on. So I don't want to say it's not serious and who knows what tomorrow will look like. But um, it didn't look like it was a huge deal. They said it was a precautionary move. I do think, though, it'll make sense for the Twins to have two guys, maybe taxi squad in, uh, as far as roster moves for tomorrow. I do think they want to get a reliever. I do think that that could be Buddy Boshears. Now, you can only bring Boshears back if the roster move is a disabled list in. So, if you taxi squad in Adrianza and you taxi squad in Bo Shears, you activate Bo Shears if you put Buxton on a seven day DL. If you don't put anybody in the DL, you gotta send Bo Shears back. Then you activate Adrianza. Adrianza then is day to day insurance for Buxton, insurance for suspension as far as Sano for tomorrow, and then is your utility guy moving forward. O for his last 12 at Rochester on the rehab stint. They've been having some weather issues, so they haven't played now in a couple days. Um, again, 12 at bats, not really that big of a deal. Adrianza also not much of a bat. So, you know, you, you, he's going to go through slumps like that. You really just want him to catch the ball at short, which, uh, again, I don't know how much of a need that is with how Polanco's playing at short so far this season. But, you know, he's... Uh, just he, he might be more valuable than Danny Santana. Granted, like I wrote in my recap, and if you're not checking those out, please do zonecoverage.com. Um, we saw the good and the bad with Danny Santana today. He absolutely obliterated that home run in the second inning, second pitch that he saw from Jarrell Cotton. Cotton was actually very, very good, I might add. Um, had the bunt single, but then he had that strikeout where strike two was an ugly swing and strike three was an even uglier swing than that. Um, defensively, you know, didn't really stand out one way or the other. Um, but how, how often are, you know, how few and far between are these games where he even shows anything? I mean, the guy's hitting 200, 231 on base, 360 slugging right now. Doesn't give you plus defense anywhere. Adrianza would at least do that. It's short. Hard to say what the options will be as far as if he's a good, um, you know, if he's going to be a good defender elsewhere. Didn't need more time to really get a sample size to see that, but... Um, so I think Adrianza might be the move. I think, yeah, Adrianza could be the move, too, if they don't necessarily feel like they need an arm. But I think they do with Tepish going 75 pitches on Saturday. So the other difficult thing there is then do you go get Melitakis? Is there a 40-man move to make room for Alex Wimmers? Or Drew Rusinski, who last I checked had been throwing the ball really well at AAA, could give you some length. So you got to think about a lot of things as far as what you can get. Uh, I think Fran the Man asked if they'll make Gibson a reliever. I don't think at this point that's an option. And frankly, it might not be any time in the Twins organization just because of where he's at. Um, just a lot of experimental stuff at a weird time in his career. So if there's going to be an upswing for Gibson as a reliever, I, I suspect it's going to be... Um, it's going to be as a starter. Uh, Ted wants to know if you make a 40-man roster move, why not Birdie? I think you got to go get a guy that can give you length. Also, Birdie is one of those where you want to bring him up permanently. So I think you'd have to like DFA Tonkin to make a permanent move with Birdie. Um, and I worry that Tonkin might not be long for this team to um, pitch. He was only Twins pitcher not to give up any runs today, which is, I'm not sure, uh, I'm not sure if that's really indicative of how good he was today or if it was just that they didn't pitch very well but you know you saw the ceiling of what he's capable of when he's on too which is tantalizing but at the same time he's getting up a bunch of homers too which is is not beneficial matt liefeld says not exactly related to the game but perkins is frustrated with his rehab will we see him again ever yeah i mean i don't think it's terribly likely that he'll ever come back um i saw the number 78 thrown out for his current velocity i have a hard time believing it's that low I know 78 was the number thrown out this spring. I would imagine he's maybe cracked 80 at least, but I don't know. With that said, he's he's plateaued and they need to start doing some 
some different things medically to see what uh, what they can do to jumpstart him. I mean, shoulders are tricky, and, and they you know I, I had heard from a couple people that ten percent might be the uh, recovery likelihood. Keep in mind too, he's thirty. What is he? Yeah, I think he's born eighty three, so he's going on thirty four. Never a good time. It's like Tony Parker tearing his ACL the other night for the Spurs. Mid thirties not a good time to have a career altering injury, guys. So um, as much as I would like to see Perkins again, I'm just not feeling like it's super likely. Um, I did see someone who said. Uh, what is a timeline for Birdie? I feel like Birdie is probably going to go to AAA. I think they're going to want to have him face AAA hitters for at least a little while. They did it with Shagwa uh, last year too, but maybe midseason. Um, you know, it all depends on how long they go with Tonkin with Breslow. You know, Breslow's looked okay, but what does Breslow give you that some of these other guys don't? I've had numerous people now tell me Nick Turley could be better than than Craig Breslow, which is interesting. I want to see what Turley's capable of, but he was uh, pretty uneven in that first start for Rochester, too. So, you know, dominating double-A as a 27-year-old, nah, it doesn't really do much for me either. So, there's going to be a lot of moving parts, and I don't think they need to worry about losing Tonkin on waivers as a move that will come back to bite them. And again, I say that as someone who likes Tonkin, and I know that the arm is live and all that good stuff, but uh, I just don't think it would be a huge, huge loss. Um... We have about three or four minutes to go here. We'll break down the game a little bit more as well. Uh, Gibson obviously didn't have it. I don't know what more can be said about that. I think Jarrell Cotton came as good as advertised. Change up fairly good. The four-seam fastball, I think he had 11 swinging strikes. We'll talk about Rosario in a second here. Somebody's asking about him. Um, 11 swinging strikes on the four-seamer for Cotton. My theory there is the Twins ramped up for the changeup. Cotton's arm slot, you know, as far as... I'm, I'm doing it from the wrong hand here, but... If he's coming from the same angle as far as a changeup fastball, you know, switching the grips up, that could throw you off, and then any given day, one or the other might be the pitch that gets you. Um, 11 swinging strikes on a four-seam fastball, though, is not a good look. Part of why the Twins struck out a season-high 12 times today. But Cotton's a good pitcher, and so I don't think there's any shame in that. He's just a young guy that, um, you know, uh, he just he said a good day. So anyway, somebody asked about Rosario. Continuing to put together good plate appearances. Um, he walked. The, the more impressive plate appearance, I know he hit a home run today too, but he also had a walk with, uh, it was a 3-1 count, saw eight pitches, walked. Uh, as Ted said on Twitter, and as I said as well, um, First walk during the hitting streak. So, obviously a, a very impressive stretch for him here now up to 14-game hitting streak. I think Trout, and I know Freddie Galvis was in the mix. I don't know if Galvis got a hit last night or not. But, um, yeah, impressive hitting streak. I did see someone ask what I'm drinking. Actually, it's a, it's a Lagavulin, and it's delightful. Thank you for asking. Getting my Ron Swanson on here tonight on a Thursday night. Ted says Nelson Cruz up to 14 game hitting streak tonight. Okay, so that puts him right in the mix with Eddie Rosario. Uh, so we saw, like I said, we saw the good and bad. Danny Santana Bucks and had a rough day. Ryan Healy had an eventful day. Bunt single to break up an 0 for 9 home run and ejected. I copied the strike zone plot from Brooks Baseball. That pitch was a strike. He had no gripe. That was a good pitch. Um, Cotton was good. Uh, the umpire took a fastball to the pills. The only thing that could have been worse there is if it would have been Frankie Montas pitching. Fortunately, it was not. Um, and get ready for Sunday. Chris Sale and Urban Santana. All right, I got to get a couple things out here. Zonecovers.com slash Amazon. Make sure you check that out. Um, if you use Amazon Prime, Amazon Pantry, nothing changes for you. We get a kickback. It's our affiliate program. Check that out. Um, Fran just asked something about if... Well, what I want the uh, no sales not going to be suspended. It sounds like um, Fran asked about what I want to see about the rotation. I think Barrios is going to be the guy next Saturday, the thirteenth, is the next one they have to fill. All right, trying to keep this under twenty minutes, so we only got ten seconds to go, guys. Thank you for checking this out tonight. You've been watching and listening to Midwest Swing, part of the Cold Omaha Podcast Network. Peace. <laughs>